from the lanes in downtown Amesbury. This is Classic Candlepins. Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Classic Candlepins. This is week three of the final ladder of the season. We witnessed a new guy get on TV for the first time. We had John Winchell take care of him. Then he made it up to John Starner. John Starner won that match last week, and now we have John Starner versus Nick Zaffalato. This is the battle of the Classic Candlepins crew right now. <laughs> John usually does the sound. Nick usually does the announcing with me. But today we're going to find out who the bowler of the day is on the crew. So we'll take a look at both of our bowlers right now, take a look at a few numbers. First, we'll look at the number three seed. His name is John Stein. He's from Haverhill, Massachusetts. He's 26 years old. He's got a league average of 120, high single of 190, high series, very impressive, 476. That's a huge number any which way you go. However, his opponent today, Nick Zaffalato, is no stranger to big numbers. Nick is 23 years old, has a high average of 121, has a high single of 200, right on the nose. That is elite. Anybody 200 high single, that's an elite number right there. And his high series is 474, and he bowls out of the lanes down in Peabody. So we get a battle of a couple of young guys in the mid-20s, part of this crop of guys that's come up and really invigorated some life into the game. The future is bright, and we have two of the brightest stars shining. We're going to go head-to-head -head right after this. We bring you Next episode, Classic Candlepins. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here for First String Action. John Stana versus Nick Zaffalato. The battle of the Classic Candlepins crewmen. <laughs> Two good buddies about to have a good match against each other. Number three C, John Stana's gonna lead things off. Had 643 in his roll off. Beat John Winchell last week, 394 to 342. And he starts out here, hits the head pin. A little triangle on the left-hand side right over there. Two, the four, and the five. And he fires and gets the good splash, gets the shot. And we're off and running. Thanks for joining us here this weekend. Glad we could become part of your day here. Bringing you some of the best candle pin bowl in action you're gonna see anywhere. John slides by. Only three in the mark, but it's early. He's got a chance to pick it up. And he fires on the outside. Takes out a few more, but still staring at four pins. Yeah, he gets one. 20 for two, it's like having a couple tens. Now up sets the number two seed, Nick Zaffalato with 644 in his roll off. Beat John Stana by one pin. It's the difference of a full seed in the ladder. Nick, no stranger to TV. Starts out with a great first ball, punches the head pin straight back. Takes out five, but a little check mark on the left, 10 pin in the corner. And he hits it right on the perfect side, throws it over. Leaves just a five pin. And kind of dropped that one on Skosh, but that's okay, nine to start. 
Nick's been on our show. This is his third time making it into the show. He was the number one seed back in November of our first ladder series last year. He and I actually had a match together. Oh, beautiful ball. Drops nine instantly. Then he came back and faced Richie Myrick in ladder one of this season. And Freshy just scooted by that single pin. And then as everybody saw, he was back here doing commentary with me in the last ladder. He will be back in the next ladder. Couple nines a start. Unless, of course, he makes the tournament of champions, that is, and then I lose him again. <laughs> I want to thank Peter Flynn again for stopping by and doing some commentary last match with me. That was fun. Johnny pushed that ball a little right. Takes out four. Whole big cluster in the middle. Just push that one to the side again. Both of these fellas and that young crop of 20 to 25 year old bowlers coming up, making a ton of noise for themselves. Good nine to get out of it. Mike McGinty, who was in first show of this ladder, also one of those guys, 18 years old, just coming out of the juniors, making a TV appearance real quick. The future looks good. Future's bright. There's a great first ball. Gets rid of nine pins, just staring at the 10 pin by itself. No playable wood to speak of. Anywhere near it, anyway. And he fires right at it, puts it on the curtain. Here comes Nick. Getting ready to get up, try to answer it. called Nicky Freshy. It's his nickname. Most people you talk about Nick and they say, who are you talking about? Oh, beautiful ball. And then we say Freshy and they say, oh, that guy that throws crusher hammers, right? Yes, him. That was a gorgeous strike. Textbook in every possible way. Try to fill it up, throw another one. Just off the head pin, but here they come. Gets rid of nine, got a good break. Pin came back up, took out the other part of the four horsemen. And it's just him in a seven pin. Big old plank all over it. And yes, use it all. That's what they say, right? <laughs> Fresh, you just said he's trying to make it exciting. So Nick has an early nine pin lead, box to box. They're both filling marks. Johnny Stana comes right back, huge eight fill. That's the good news. Bad news, it was 7-10. Wood touching it on the seven pin. Then there's one way out front. Almost in the middle of the lane. See which end of that he plays. He went right, left rather. Oh. That wood was stretched out in the gutter too. He would have thought the ball would have touched it on the way by. But it did not. He'll take a 10 out of it. I don't think he'll be too upset at a 10 there, but.
Johnny trying to clean up a little dirty laundry over there. Giving everybody in the crowd a little suspense. Ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> there we go. There's a fresh 10. And he fires right at those 10. And then he knocks down all 10. Beauty. Strike to sit. Here comes Freshie filling up his mark that he left up there. He fires right at it. Just a deuce. Half four store on the right side. And kind of skipped that one on the line a little bit. Took a little of the spin away from it. Still staring at four pins. He hits the head pin as hard as possible. So both the bowlers are tied, 57 halves. John Steiner's on a strike. Nick's going to try to match Marks anyway. Get himself at least a spare up there. There's a really good ball. A little heavy on the head pin. Got a little break, at least there's a couple pieces of wood there. The biggest two and one, it's the four seven on the left, 10 pin on the right. Couple pieces of playable wood. Nick takes a good look at everything. Fires right down into that left corner. Play the top of the wood and it only took out the four pin. And he takes out the 10 pin for the nine. A 66 after six. Here's John Stoner right now working on a big strike. Has a chance to open this string up a little bit right here. One good ball. Six on the first one. Leaves the half horse I'm sorry, the four horsemen on the right side. One, three, six, ten. Slid by seven fill. He does the right thing, goes for the short two, gets his nine. There's always the great debate about that. If you have the head pin by itself and then a couple pins in the corner, do you go for the head pin and make the 10? Or do you just go for the cluster and take as many as possible? And I'm of the opinion of what John just did. Just throw at the cluster, take as many as you can, move on to the next box and try to do something better. I'd rather look at nine than look at six or seven any day. Johnny had missed the head pin, left Three, took two, left with the one. And now it's gone. So the door is definitely still open here. It's still very, very early in the match, but these fellas know it's a long grind, but it's better to keep things close than say, I got two strings left and be down 30 or 40. Both of these guys have done it. Both of these guys know how to do it.
And Nick plays that wood in the gutter. Grady kicked it three pin down. Right into that wood and it came out, popped, took the spare. And the bonus ball. Oh, wants that to stay up. You take the one less pin for the fill, but give yourself a better opportunity to make the next one. Which it does. Cluster of five in the corner. And he gets it moving. And that nine pin just stood firm. Said, nope. Eh, it's gone now. So two pins going into the end of the first string here. Neither one of these guys have really taken complete control of the string yet. Is John off a little bit? Got a decent splash. A five. Nice and all tucked in together, though. Head pin's still the object. And he brings it home. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful. I know that was a little bit of an early call, but... Leaving his hand, that ball looked perfect. And the bonus ball. Just came in light on the head pin, came in very light. It takes five. Awkward configuration. The seven and the ten on the corners. And then the three, five, and the eight diagonally in the middle. Not a common leave at all. A couple pieces of wood in there just to make it interesting. Object pin being that three pin, and he hit it. The eight stood firm again. <laughs> Excuse me. And the nine for 117. Pins appear to be tightening up a little bit. Tends to happen. And both of these fellas got a ton of talent. Shouldn't matter all that much. And Nick with a great first ball. He came in very light as well, but almost light enough where the head pin stayed around, came back and helicoptered and just made a big mess. After said and done, he drops nine, and he hit the cap, the ball carried it through. Beautiful spare, jumps all over a good break. Matches mocks with John Stana. Nick takes a good long look down six. And fires. Bonus ball for 10. Big strike on spare. Takes the lead with that ball. First ball. Oh, goodness. Went to the left side of the pocket, the 1 2 pocket. Leaves the five and the ten. And he almost made it, gave it a heck of a run. So he comes out 129 on the bottom. Both of the fellas had great strings. Nicky finished a little stronger. Nick takes a 12 pin lead into game two. We'll take a little break, the boys will too. And hope you stay with us. We'll see you right on the other side. Hi, 
I'm John Steiner, and you're watching Classic Candle Pins. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to spring number two. This week's episode of the Classic Candle Pins is a semifinal week. Winner of this match earns the right to face Brian Fuller Jr. next week for the big one, the last seed in the Tournament of Champions. We have four. We're looking for one more. Freshy makes a case to say it should be him. Big strike in the first box. That started out not looking too good. But it ended up working out for him. And then he murders the head pin. Takes out eight, two in the middle. Yes. Big spare. Thanks, bud. See, even Freshie does it. Stana did it to me last match when he missed it. Nick makes the two pinner and he goes, that's for you, Mackie. John just punches through. Takes the stick for the nine. As I said, we do already have four of our five entrants into the Tournament of Champions ladder series that we'll be taping next month. Top seed right now is Jeff Surrett, followed closely by Jason Simino from Ladder Series number one. John hits the head pin hard, gets eight of his own, 4-7. And followed by Chris Sargent from the last ladder. And then Tina Ward, we're looking for that fifth bowler. And John just left it out to the right side. And it will be one of these final three. John Stana, Nick Zaffalato, or next week's challenger, Brian Fuller Jr. As John takes another nine. Nick coming into the string with a 12 pin lead from last game is gonna add to that. And then some. Skipped it off the line, and then this happened. Breaks up into eight drop, nine in the ten. Two pieces of wood arranged like a capital T, perpendicular and then horizontal. He tried to get by the cap, missed it, hit it, went into the wall, and came back, took both pins, and Nick comes back scratching his head, but sometimes the best thing to do is just push the button and move on. Fill it up and try to get another one. Call that a good break and another. And here's Nick with a bonus ball on the head pin. Oh, he's getting him to move. He's throwing that loose ball. Seven on the fill. Left side of the spread eagle. Two, four, seven. Nice wood in the middle of it. All you gotta do is hit the object. And he does, and he takes it. My goodness, four in a row to start. 65 plus a ball after four. Here comes Johnny Stana. The eye of the tiger right there. Determined to put a dent in this. This head pin a little bit, got the four horsemen. 
post out. John threw the ball perfectly for the four horsemen on the right side. Right with his curve and everything. Oh, just, just missed the head pin. There it is, big stick. Step over to lane six. Still with that eye of the tiger. Puts the ball right down the middle. Well, he punched out the guts. Then with some late action, he's now left with the two, three, and the ten. It's kind of a sweeper wood next to the two pin, which he's aiming at. Took the two and the ten. Three still remains. Still remains. Thirty-seven after four. Nick's already at sixty-five plus a ball. Nick fires, just slides by the head pin by next to nothing. Five fell on the mark. He's got that four horseman left with that sleeper. We've been talking about this shot all day. And that was weird. Just a head pin and a four pin in the middle. Seems like each ladder series we have that one shot that always keeps coming up. This particular time, it's that four horseman with the sleeper. So Nick takes eight, 78 half. Not a thing wrong with that. There's nobody would trade one of those away. He'll look to start to put a second back half on this. Just as good as the first half. Comes back on the head pin, a little light. Not such a good mix this time. He's got that three pin on the right there in the front. Seven, nine, ten. I don't know, some weird wood in the back on the nine and the ten. See how he gets it all moving. Oh, goodness. <laughs> he put a ball through the size of an opening that was only the size of the ball. Wow. I think that was the ball he was trying to throw. Just catch the side of the pin. And some late rollers. Nope. So that'll be another eight. Still 86 for six. Not a thing wrong with that. Johnny Stein is going to get it going here. Been bowling good all day today. I've never believed in the moniker that you were due for a bad one. I think that's a load of it. There's just some strings that make you work harder than some others. Nobody's due for anything. And now we can't miss that bit. Rip the guts out for three. Right back through the same spot. Gonna clean up eight or nine of these. I got a feeling. Almost a seven. He's having much the same string that we saw John Winchell have, second string of last week. Just couldn't get a thing to break up and mess up for him. And just keep toughing through these games. You know, these games happen to everybody.
still two pins. Head pin and the six pin. Still two pins. So after six here in the second game, Knicks winning 86 to 52. He's got a 34 pin lead here, plus the 12 from last game. We're going to have 46 at pretty much the halfway point in the match. That's the operative word, though. Match is only half over. A lot of time for Nick to add more pins. A lot of time for John to catch up on all these pins. And there's Nick doing his job to add them. Big spare. Great ball. Freshy feeling it. Get into that proverbial zone, that place where it all just happens. Great two boxes right there. Putting the hammer down in the game. John Stana. Everything except the kingpin. In his spare time, John's an avid golfer. There's a nice 10. And he also shoots trap, which for any people that may not know is like, you know, clay shooting and target shooting and such things. He's been doing that for a very long time. He's quite good at it. I try to keep as close of friends as possible with him because he owns a lot of guns. <laughs> no, in, in all fairness, John and I have been friends for a long time now, close buds. Again, the same leave, the same spare shot, the same pin to stare at. These pins don't want to agree with him in this game. But that's two solid 10 boxes in a row. Not what he's looking for, but there's little victories everywhere you go. <coughs> Excuse me. So up steps Nick to finish second string. Got a big lead, trying to add. Fires. Misses out in the head stick. Takes seven. Let it go, he knew it. He heard the groan. One to three in the seven pin. Clean this up for a nice nine to 10. Beautiful 10. Great pinning in this string. He's at 131 with a full box. Really putting it down. Oh, the wood took a nice little turn and he took 10. Nick got the really good roll. First bonus ball. Drops a huge nine. A 150. For 151. Yes. Excellent string. Two eighty for two. Outstanding. Oh. 
Johnny can't buy a bucket right now. Poor kid. He'll stick through, though. Tough these games out. Plays it just on the nose. It's that half inch of a difference. It's almost the exact same position John was in. John Winchell was in last week against John Stana. Got to finish with a spare here. Keep your spirits up for the next game. All right. Six ten on the right, seven on the left. Again, Woods shaped like a T behind the two pinner. And he shot it over. It's right in front. Puts it on the curtain for 10. It's an 88. He'll forget that real quick. So a rough one for John Stana, but... After two, Nikki Zafalato's got the lead, 280 to 205, on the heels of a huge 151 string in the second game. The lead is 75 pins with one to go. Championship match next week. The winner gets Brian Fuller Jr. We'll find out who takes this match right on the other side. I'm Nick Zaffalato, and you're watching Classic Candlepins. As we start the third string, John Stein is going to lead us off, get us going. He's in a bit of a hole right now, but get up there and throw that loosey-goosey ball, get those pins moving, and stranger things have happened. I've known John a long time. He was one of the best eye of the tiger stairs I've ever seen in my life. Boy can throw the ball with no doubt. And there is the prime example. Starts out in beautiful fashion. Gets himself going with a hammer real early. First bonus ball. Gets the head stick again. Leaves the triangle on the right side. Three, five, and the six. Fires right at it, carries it through. That's exactly what he needed to do. Exactly what he needed to do. So he gets himself going at Lodge style. Nick Zaffalato, been bowling great all day, 129, 151. Starts out here, missed the head pin, leaves that four horseman plus the sleeper again. Heavy on the head pin, carries the four horseman. That eight pin said no. Had to go that time. He hit it in the face. Puts it on the curtain. John takes 10 pins back off the lead. Any one of these final three men would be a fine addition to the Tournament of Champions. Nick with an absolute devastating nine drop. Leaves a six pin. Wood touching it in the back. Double wood out front. It's off to the side a little bit, but I actually think he'll try to miss it. He tried to, but he stuffed it right home. Matches the mock put up by John Stana. 
That was tougher than it looked, folks. There's a lot of ways for that shot to go wrong, but it didn't. Carried straight through. Up steps John Stana. League average 120, high single 190. He'd love having one of those right now, and here it comes. My goodness. <laughs> Good friend of ours, Steve Bruce, in the back just yelled $50 in bonus money. You're killing me, Steve. <laughs> First bonus ball. Carries him six. Run of three in the front. One, two, and four. That nine pin sleeping around in the back there. Johnny carries nine right through. And then takes out that nine pin sleeper for a 10 box. 69 for four. There's one hell of a start right there. <clears throat> Up steps Freshy to answer the call. Freshy himself has a league average of 121. High single of 200 right on the nose. Left a two and one right there in that shot, just bananaed that front pin around. Yeah, little different terms for different things. When and he leaves an eight up there. If you know any different terms for shots that we call or things that we call them, put them in the comments section below. I'd love to learn some new terms. New things that other people say, depending on where you're from. Some people call it the four horsemen. Some people just call it a ladder. Half Worcester, some people call it double wood. If you know any obscure terms, put them in the comments section. I want to take a look and hear them. If we find a few good ones, we'll use them up here. Nick leaves another eight up there. So after four boxes, John Stein has chewed off 26 pins. The lead is only 49 now. It was 75 before the game started. John has definitely found the head pin again. Four for five on it, this string. The only box he missed, it was the only box he hasn't marked yet. And he carries that pin straight through. Yeah, we were saying earlier with different terms, when you have a shot and you take the front pin and you just punch it straight back, we like to say you cherry picked it. But if you curve it around the other pins, it kind of follows like a banana theme. We go with the fruit theme here, I guess, in candle pins. <laughs> John all over the head pin. Another strike on spare. And uh, don't go anywhere, folks. Don't go anywhere. And there's Nick right there on the head pin, too. He leaves himself a little two-pinner. Two in the four. Piece of wood probably going to roll off. Yes, it did. And he fires right at it. And he punches the front one straight back. That's the cherry I was speaking of. Cleans that up for the 10. That's a 
another 10 off. Box to box, the lead is only 39 now. And John still has a strike up. Nick missed. Got a little late action here. Two pins in the front. That's sleeper nine in the back. You almost want to try to drive it through as hard as you can. Much like that. That was beautiful. The definition of how to make that shot right there. Great bowling put on by the boys here. Great show. Box to box is 99 to 63. That same 26, um, excuse me, 36 pins being taken off. They're both filling. John is on a strike. Can he throw a double? Good looking ball. And yes, he will throw the double. Yes, he will. Absolutely crush a nine drop. The seven pin had to make up its mind for a minute, but couldn't stay up for that much longer. For the triple. For the triple. For the triple. That's a huge fill. Seven pin by itself. Four in a row. Nope. That's nine in the second strike. One forty six after eight. Is Nick filling his spare? And he's on the head pin. Carry seven, got a nice break. That seven pin decided to fall over late. Triangle in the right corner. Six, nine, and the 10. Plenty of wood all over it, crushes it home. Spare on spare, two in a row. Bonus ball. Oh, huge nine, eight drop. Something tripped out the eight pin at the last moment. Six pin by itself in the face. John's taken 47 pins off of the lead. Nick is still up 28, but he does have a ball. Only the second time all string, John missed a head pin. Bowling outstanding this string. 1, 2, 9, 10. Puts it on it. No. Head pin going around the 10, hit it right at the 9 pin, just did not carry it. 10 box for 156. Win, lose, or draw, whatever the outcome of this string is, this has been one of the greatest strings we've seen on classic candle pins.
Oh. The cherry on the head pin will still be in the 160s. Seen some great bowling in this match. Knew there'd be some fireworks. Eight for 164. Three game total at 369. Freshy is already over that. Nick Zeffalato will face Brian Fuller Jr. next week. The right to go to the Tournament of Champions. Nick trying to finish strong here, get himself up over 400, which he should be. There's a nine. Needs five for 400. And there's a 400, folks, 403. And all oh, of the infamous banana. Two pin for the 10 box, it's good. So in one of the most exciting strings that we've seen, John Steiner wins a string 164 to 125, but Nick Zeffalato wins the match 405 to 369. 36 pin victory for Nick. He'll face Brian Fuller Jr. next week. We'll be back in a minute to talk to John Stana. We'll see you right on the other side. Hi again, everybody. Welcome back to the Post Game Recap. I'm Mark Ritchie. I'm here with John Stana, today's runner-up. Uh, John, that was one hell of a match. I didn't know if it was going to end up being that close at the end. You come out with, like, an ungodly amount of strikes in that game. You had four strikes. You had a double. Um, I thought you hated lane seven. You threw three out of your four strikes on lane seven. Oh, I absolutely uh, hate seven. I, I, I hate it with a passion. That's fantastic. With a passion. With, with a passion. Yes. That, Big time. That's an amazing recap of this last match. Basically of a lane that he absolutely destroyed that he said he never liked before, but I'm proud of you. I'm glad you made it on the show. You had a heck of a roll off the other day. It's good to see you. And, uh, you know, I see you every day. So, you know, he's the guy, they're the girls, they're doing their thing. Brucey, it's a fun time here. More people need to come up and watch the taping. Thank you everybody for watching the match. For Johnny Stana, for the whole fan club, for the whole Riverwalk Army, I'm Maki Pins. We'll see you next week on Classic Candle Pins. Thank you.